Hi Virgo, welcome to your Bliss Report for January and February 2018. Now in case you're wondering what is a Bliss Report, I decided to rename my, what was I calling them, Prosperity Reports, which, which I was doing every two months and it was like looking at finances, career matters, and using the tarot and oracle cards. And I changed things up because it's really not uh, all about that in order to be happy in life, obviously. Because uh, some people, they, you know, they tolerate their jobs and they're not like, really unhappy with their jobs, but they have other passions that they want to explore. Some people are retired, some people are stay-at-home parents, and and they are looking for ways to, you know, express themselves and things. So I want to kind of broaden it out a little bit and just see what comes up here when it comes to fulfilling your destiny, your dreams. And this is for the period for January and February of 2018. And I know um, January is like quickly winding down. I got a little bit um, backed up because of uh, getting the flu. So I'm back in the saddle again. So, well, let me just put out these cards. This is the Morgan Greer deck, by the way. I'll try to put a link below. I've made uh, affiliate links in case people want to order uh, cards. Somebody had written to me and said, you know, to tell whenever I do a reading what cards I'm using, and that's a good Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But uh, So, <clears throat> this is the Morgan Greer deck. I'm also going to be picking a card from my new Akashic Tarot deck. And then one from the Keepers of Light. I got this for another sign. Sometimes I get the same ones. Okay, so let's um, look at what these show. This is the theme for this period of time. This is actually your card, um, Virgo. A lot of people associate being a hermit with somebody who is kind of uh, stick, you know, staying by themselves, but it's also looking for that inner illumination. You can see he's got that star uh, lighting up his lantern, and he's looking at it from his own perspective. And um, you may be doing your own soul searching when it comes to something involving your life path and which direction to go in. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and that's good. That's always really good to put a lot of thought into things and not to just be on automatic in your life. And the, the idea of being alone is also very important because when people are surrounding themselves with people a lot, it's easy to get influenced by those people, even if you're a very independent thinker. I, I found it out a long time ago that it's very easy to kind of take in other people's ideas. You may kind of, you may like rail against them and say you're totally opposed to them, but there's always this place in your mind that kind of like it, it plants doubt or it's just a negative influence. So there's no point to that. It's a pointless uh, thing to do to yourself. In the past position we have the magician cards. So uh, some Virgo people are waking up to the law of attraction. And 
knowing that they are not, that, the, that they don't have to live with learned helplessness, uh, which is something that happens when you're a child because children are, you know, basically they're helpless. They're at the mercy of the adults that are raising them. And if you experience trauma or just dysfunction in your childhood, it's very easy to grow up thinking that life is happening to you. And it's something you have to shake off at some point, or else you will be the eternal victim who is always um, feeling very oppressed. And it's funny because I got as the, as the, uh, the lesson, the spiritual lesson, in what you have been through is the Nine of Swords, which is about um, that kind of uh, feeling, uh, but it's, it's anxiety um, first and foremost. You see, isn't it interesting the themes that happen? The number nine is also at play here. So what could that possibly mean? in relationship to that hermit card. Well, the number nine is a number that I associate with an interior life. I think it's a yin number where it's like, it's it's feminine. I'm not sure though, but it's definitely associated with being alone. The number nine life path is one of humanitarianism and art, being an artist. And so, the thoughts that you have when you're alone, um, you have to you have to change them, and that's what where meditation comes in because uh, a lot of I think um, one of the big things about the Nine of Swords is that you may be blowing things out of proportion. Virgo is a high strung kind of a sign ruled by Mercury, so the thoughts are constantly going sometimes, and um, for Virgo people. A lot of those thoughts can be of their um, inferiority complex and things like that. Being the, Virgos associated with perfectionism, and that perfectionism is coming from a place of feeling very, very imperfect. Because a person who accepts their flaws doesn't have to try to eradicate all of them. You know, that's something to think about. A person who is ashamed that they're not perfect is going to keep trying to be perfect, and that will set up a lot of anxiety. Well, it crosses you as the Hierophant, and um, if there's a toxic Taurus in your life, then that could be what's going on. But this is the card of turning your back on spirituality. So, <laughs> you know, here I have the Hermit card, but that doesn't necessarily auto automatically mean that uh, Virgos are in a spiritual state of mind. It could just be that you are isolating yourself. <clears throat> and the, the Hierophant is connected to having your own philosophy of life. If you don't think that way, you run the risk of you're going to accept somebody else's philosophy, if not your own. So it's almost like making up the rules to the game of life and then living by them and, and having your own parameters. But some of you may be, you know, some people think that it's anti-intellectual to believe in God and they just totally shun anything that has to do with um, spirituality even. And and they they liken it to organized religion. No, that's why it is called spirituality, because it's not under a certain dogma and things like that. But it's like going from one extreme to the other. And I find that people who are suffering from anxiety, a lot of times they may not have anything spiritual to fall back on. So if the world is all you have to feel um, secure about life, you're kind of like in deep doo-doo because the world is what's causing the problems. It's not the, the spiritual part of things. 
unless you're involved in some kind of a religion that is very shame-based and fear-mongering, uh, then in that case it could be very toxic to you. But um, we're talking more... Oh, and you know, that could be, and for some of you, you may have been indoctrinated in a particular religion that you're trying to fight against now. You're thinking for yourself, but you still have those remnants of that indoctrination that you're fighting against. So yeah, it could be something like that. The advice is the Emperor card. This is about taking charge of your life. Um, sometimes the Emperor gets accused of being black and white, binary thinking. But actually, um, we all know times in life when it's very important to be decisive and not be wishy-washy. And this may be one of those times for you, Virgo, where you're thinking a lot, you're ruminating, but now it's time to take decisive action. If, you know, um, Libra is right next to you, so you may have personal plants in Libra that make you a bit wishy-washy, and you need to be very much on point with your decisions and that confidence. You know, usually when people are um, having a hard time making decisions because they don't trust their own judgment. And nobody can do this for you. You have to believe in yourself and know that you are worthy of making good choices. The outcome is the Ten of Cups. This is a card of um, love coming into your life. This, you know, this reading is not meant to be a love reading, but this could be something in your future. It's also just a card of um, emotional well-being. Uh, it's, it's, the number 10 can relate to family matters. So that means that if you've been having rifts within your family, you could have more harmony within your family. And it can also just be the apex of some kind of a happy situation. Maybe you're going to be happier than you've been in a really long time, Virgo. The Ten of Cups is a very positive card for emotions, emotional well-being. And it's a far cry from that Nine of Swords, that's for sure. So let's move on to your... Um, well, this is considered a tarot card, but it's not the typical type of tarot deck, so... I hesitate to call it just, let me see, I'm reading from the booklet. Roses are scattered around a contract on a brightly lit desk. When this card appears upright, it means a valuable union is at hand. <laughs> union. Huh? A romantic commitment may be coming your way, or perhaps a love from your past lives is returning to you. Hmm. A business commitment may be forthcoming, such as an offer of a promotion or a new job or the opportunity to form a partnership or create a new business venture. This card could also indicate the signing of other types of papers, including the sale or purchase of a house or the beginning of a new investment. Either way... This card is filled with light and indicates that good results are in the offing. As with many cards, part of the meaning refers to you. It is a reminder of your commitment to yourself. If you want others to put you first or to help bring happiness to your life, you must commit to do the same. Your self-honoring choices will set the groundwork for all your partnerships to thrive. Okay, well that's really cool. And then um, we have the, how do you pronounce this? Shekinah, sacred self, unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. Trying to look up this in the booklet. <clears throat> the Shekinah is the twin flame of the Holy Spirit. It is the female aspect of the God particle or creation energy. 
she is more of an essence than a being, but has the ability to show herself in ways that we will understand. She is acknowledged in the sacred teachings of Judaism and is also called the Sophia of Christ in the Gnostic Gospels. She is a powerful female voice of spirit who is here to bring about equality and to help the world move on from the male-only image of God. She reminds us that God is all-loving and all-accepting. Whenever she appears in a reading, she points out the change makers, the love creators, and the gift sharers of the world who are here to unite all hearts around the world. Don't feel the need to hold back or dampen your spirit. This is a time to celebrate. There's a feeling of dance and joy. That's this card. It's about celebration. Uh, around you at this time as you fully recognize your splendor. You are a sacred being who defies gravity every day just by being alive and brings a sense of balance and equality to the world. Virgos are oftentimes underappreciated because, and, 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 you know, I have the moon in Virgo, but uh, let's just talk about sun, sun in Virgo, maybe uh, Virgo rising. Uh, Virgos don't ask for recognition, uh, typically. They, they usually are very humble. Uh, Virgo is the servant, the sixth house. They rule the sixth house, which is of service. And part of that can be like a literal servant. Um, and a servant, a good servant, is somebody who assists another person without ego. And we tend to, to view those types of people, there's a term servile, which is not a, um, a nice adjective. It means somebody who is like overly submissive to another person. But there's no sense of loss of, of um, one's self-esteem when you're coming from a pure place serving other people. And a lot of times Virgos are just interested in helping others because they possess a lot of efficiency and sometimes dexterity, intelligence, the ability to be very useful to other people's lives. And it's a shame when people do not acknowledge that fully. But um, hopefully you feel acknowledged, Virgo, and have a great uh, couple of months. God bless. Bye.